So we've learned what disjoint events are, and now we want to see how that affects probability. This leads us to our first probability rule, which says, um, which is the addition rule for disjoint events. It says that if E and F are disjoint or mutually exclusive um, events, then the probability of E or F is equal to the probability of E plus the probability of F. Okay, seems simple enough. All right, so let's see how this works in practice. So suppose you're going to draw a single card from a standard 52 card deck. Let Q be drawing a queen and A equal drawing an ace. And then they want us to create a Venn diagram for that. All right, so this will be Q over here. This will be A over here. All right, so over in the Q side, we have the queen of spades, queen of hearts, the queen of clubs, and the queen of diamonds. Over on the ace side, we have the ace of hearts, the ace of spades, the ace of clubs, and the ace of diamonds. I changed my order there. All right, so now what's roaming around out here? So in the box is everything else in the sample space that is neither one of those two things. So that's the two, the three, the four, the five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, and king for all the suits for clubs, spades, diamonds, and hearts. Okay, so we have a lot of cards out here for the standard 52 card deck. Okay, so this should be pretty straightforward. What is the probability of Q? Well, there's four items in Q. Right, the queen of spades, queen of hearts, and so on. So that makes four out of 52. And ace, similarly, is also four out of 52. Okay, seems reasonable. So then what is the probability of Q and ace? So this would mean, when you see the A or the and, it means that you have to have both at the same time. That's the way it works in statistical probability. And and, we'll make a note right here. both at the same time, right? So you'd have to manage to be both a queen and an ace at the same time, which obviously cannot happen. Therefore, it's zero out of 52 or just zero. So, so far I haven't used that fancy rule at the top. These three examples right here are actually just Examples from section 5.1, they're just looking at the sample space. And by the way, they're all classical probabilities. It's just a little side note. <laughs> I'll put that in a second. All right, so then, or, okay, note, or in statistics means, it just occurred to me, I should have put and up here. And means both at the same time. Or means either one or the other or both, although both is impossible in this case. So that's the one that we're going to use the probability rule up above for. So if we want the probability of Q or ACE, we want the probability of Q plus the probability of ACE, which is 4 out of 52 plus 4 out of 52, which is 8 out of 52 like that. Now all of these is just easier to leave it as a fraction. Of course we could change them to a decimal if we wanted to. Let me grab decimals. So in decimals you can take 8 divided by 52 and get a decimal like 0.1538. Over here on the left there's a little fraction button in the blue section to the left of your problem and it'll change it to a fraction. That's a reduced fraction. Right, because 4 goes into 8 2 times and 4 goes into 52 13 times. So it's it's a little bit of a cheat in there, which is fine. So it didn't ask for a reduced fraction, so it doesn't really matter. So, But just for your own benefit, um, it would be also 2 out of 13. It would also be 0 0.1538. The 0 0.1538, of course, warrants the approximation sign because we're rounding. I'm going to add a couple questions here at the bottom just to make sure we're understanding what's happening. So if you're watching this um, in spring 23, just write these down. They'll be there in the, in the notes for later semesters. So just kind of expanding on this idea, heart and diamond 
are disjoint, right? If you're a heart, then you got a diamond. So if they want the probability of a heart or diamond, right? If I just say this, heart or diamond, that's the probability of a heart plus the probability of a diamond, which is, well, 13 out of 52 plus 13 out of 52, which is 26 out of 52 or a half. The half is the reduced fraction, of course. Now, some of you are thinking, well, I knew it was 50% anyway, of course, right? But we're just trying to understand how this works. So you're doing a basic problem to help you with later problems. And all these probabilities are classical. You're not actually dealing cards to yourself, right? They're, you're more just thinking about how a card deck works in general and figuring out the probabilities from there. And I will label this one. That's a reduced fraction. In case you're ever asked for a reduced fraction, that's what it is. And decimals will find those for you. If you just say to decimals, hey, it's 26 divided by 52, it tells you it's 0.5. If you click the little fraction button over on the left, it'll tell you that it's a half. Right? Simple as that.